And a very good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Grandstand on this Saturday afternoon here in Melbourne and we have a big day of racing in front of us covering the meeting from Sandown of course here in Melbourne and we also have racing from Sydney where it's a big day. Sydney Cup day up there, they've had plenty of rain but uh, still a very big day of racing and also the meeting from South Australia this afternoon at Victoria Park and we'll be taking you right through until five o'clock also keeping you up to date with what's happening in the football today right throughout the afternoon so we hope you can stay with us here on Grandstand right through until five o'clock this afternoon. Well as of uh, scratchings to report in fact five for the program from the first event there are no scratchings and race two is also clear now race number three, a late scratching of number five, and that is True Gint. Number five, True Gint out of race number three. Race four is clear. The Sandown Country Cup race five take out one Drury Sun and four Nakundra, one and four. Race six take out number 14, Blackjack Lady. Race seven, the scratchings are eight, Beatrice Levette, and 14, Charlie's Price, and the final event on the card and here there are no scratchings and a full field of 13 to face the starter. Now the first event, as I said, from... Lights on, they're off and racing. They broke as one. Bayside Princess dropped out to the back of the field shortly after the start. Broadway Bound began quickly with Nam Nan Prost and Pop Artist got up on the inside. Now Highland's going to go to the front on Broadway Bound, the favourite, and she's galloped freely to the lead to lead out a length and a half to Pop Artist. Three quarters further back, now a length off is Nam Nan Prost as he stacks them up in front. Then over on the inside is Rivetta. They're followed by Carrying Bush Lass. Around the outside of it goes Lachelle. Last of all, back along the inside Bayside Princess. Around the turn of the 9.50, Broadway Bound found Carring Bush Lass whipping around the outside with a lightning move and she went to the front Carring Bush Lass by a length and second placing Broadway Bound came away from the rail. A half further back uh, is on the outside Nam Nan Pros in a race of tactics and Pop Artist. Over on the fence there is Rivetta and further back on the field Lachelle and two to Bayside Princess nearing the turn. Carring Bush Lass is quickly grabbed by Broadway Bound under a bit of pressure is Nam Nan Pros on the outside and then further back is Pop Artist down to the 300 now, Nam Nan Prose and Broadway Bound go to the front from Carring Bush Lass, then further back, Rivetta from Lachelle, it's on the inside, Broadway Bound, Nam Nan Prose getting on terms and further out, running home well is Rivetta Rivetta's raced up and grabbed them, here's Lachelle finishing quickly, Rivetta took the lead from Lachelle and Pop Artist in the middle it's Rivetta in front and here's a boil over Rivetta gets the money, Rivetta scores by a length in the post to Pop Artist, ahead away third, Lachelle, then Nam Nan Prose fourth, fifth home in the race is Broadway Bound, second last, Carrie Bush Lass, and a race I'm sure punters would like to forget, Bayside Princess last in. Well, the winner of race number one is number four, Rivetta. A race where they chopped and changed, and number four goes in the frame, number four, Rivetta, which is steamed down the middle of the track to get to Nam Nan Pros and Broadway Bound with about 180 metres to go. And Rivetta, by willingly, has come on to win and win quite well. The judge calling on the photo for the minors. It'll rest between Pop Artist and Lachelle. A fancy Pop Artist to get second. Number three in the photo. Ahead of Lachelle on the outside, number seven. Four and a photo. Number three, Pop Artist, 95 cents. Number seven, Lachelle, no third dividend. Quinella paid $13.45 and the trifecta was $209.70. That result now official after the first at Sandown. Now, race one coming up from Ramgo at any moment. This time, Egan Ninja won from the outside best to begin from Great Thespian and Christmas Joy, then Star Maverick, Smash Hit and Diocese. Going fast is Marinsky now with Hollywood and Bill. Dropping off is Diocese and then comes King Knight and getting out of his ground is Moyne Park and Tatten Tata. Egan Ninja, 700 to go, leads a length on King Knight on the inside. Hollywood third, then Marinsky, followed by Star Maverick. Wider out Great Thespian and then Christmas Joy, three Moyne Park, Bill and then Smash Hit, who's lost his good 
good early position. Second last is Diocese and Tatton Tartars last on the corner. Egan Ninja's rider going towards the centre and King Knight sticking to the rails just in front of Egan Ninja. Hollywood coming between them, then Star Maverick followed by Moyne Park smash hit and Christmas Joy's next. 200 to go and Egan Ninja shows the way. He's kicked a length and a half in fact. Forget about Hollywood, won't run on the first three and Egan Ninja's well clear at the 100. Two lengths on Star Maverick and then King Knight and Moyne Park. But Egan Ninja's far too classy for its rivals and wins two and a half. Egan Ninja has beaten Star Maverick, third home King Knight, then Moyne Park, smash hit, followed in by Bill and then Marinsky, Hollywood a big flop, further back Diocese, Tatton Tata, then Christmas Joy and Christmas Joy's stable mate was last, namely Great Thespian. And the numbers in the first event as we see Egan Ninja going to the line, two, six and one, the winners. Star Maverick second paid two dollars, King Knight third two dollars and ninety five cents. The Quinella was sixteen dollars seventy and the trifecta three hundred and forty four dollars and five cents. Now they're moving into the gates in Adelaide. For this, the running of the... Year-olds down the straight 1,000-metre track. They're racing. Silver now a bit slow from the inside and away well. Heroic Village and Brief Courtship jumped away quickly. They're on the inside section. Ruck will start beaten for speed. Archivist going fast and so too in that division was designed. With them too was Karen Kate whilst coming down the outside. Scornabella drops across in front of Scargill's Luck and there too on the inside right up to the rail now is Glowing Adelaide and going with it friendly deal just in behind them Golden Effigy and going with them Scargill's luck further back then Heineken boy shown the whip as they go past the 500 Perella drop right out on the inside design just the leader from Karen Kate and Archivist clear a brief courtship heroic vintage all hard ridden rock will star glowing Adelaide the leader down the outside by a half now to friendly deal under the whip coming at it Scornabella Scargill's luck and can also Golden Effigy inside outside outside in front glowing Adelaide with him throwing everything at it just the leader coming at it now as friendly deal whilst down the inside coming home late as heroic vintage it'll beat them all Heroic Vintage goes to the lead from Designed and Heroic win Vintage wins from Designed. Third's anybody's guess. Friendly deal out wide's a chance and also flashing up in the centre. Brief courtship and Archivist down on the inside. They're all over the shop. Glowing Adelaide out wide on the track was not far away. Scargill's luck was there. Nearer the inside, Silver now pulling up with Karen Kate Rackle star and also there, our star Relic, who was never in the call early. Scorner Bella towards the centre. Further back behind them, Perala pulling up with Ombre Rose. Gold and effigy knocking up quickly and Heineken boy also pulling up quickly beating a few in. First event from Adelaide this afternoon Ron Papp sees them 5-1 and a photo the winner number five. I'll be able to pick this up before it does go any further we'll just have to uh, wait and see. Craig Din the rider is quite okay he was standing in the structure of the stalls oh well they tried a new trick there um, this is something that they are going to try bringing a strap across 65. Quinella was $18.05 and the trifecta $360.70. That's correct weight on the first event from Adelaide with the numbers being 5, 1 and 2. Now my Abbey going back down to the start. They're just about ready here. My Abbey is a runner. Gates are back and they're off and running. Away they go. And one of the best away is Mr Marmaduke, jumped out quickly on the outside, Aurora Peak is quickly up looking for the lead settling down, My Abbey settled in behind them, Doug's hoping our change of luck are further out, Aurora Peak just led up on the outside moving to it pretty quickly now as our change of luck and they're followed by Doug's hope, it'll get into the box seat, Celtic Spirit's gone up fourth, he can nearly get in there to be one out and one back virtually if he kicks up, they're followed by My Abbey, now Barrett's one off the fence on the favourite, a length to Mon Maddock, Mr Marmaduke from Vamp's Choice and further back God's Girl and last of all is a comely uh, lady going by the winning post, 1800 metres to go, Aurora Peak led, led nearly a length to our change of luck and Doug Soap third on the inside of the favourite Celtic Spirit, there followed two or three lengths away by My Abbey a length for the back Mon Maddock and over on the inside Mr Marmaduke, outside at Vam's Choice, two lengths for the back God's Girl and two to Comely Lady, 1600 to go to the back they race, there's no pace and the leader is Aurora Peak by over a length and second placing our change of luck Doug Soap settled down nicely third, a length to Celtic Spirit travelling OK fourth. One off the fence, two lengths for the back, My Abbey and Mon Matic. A length then to on the outside, Vamp's Choice. On the inside of it, Mr Marmaduke and two to God's Girl and Comely Lady. 1,300 to go down the back, Aurora Peak led. Only about a head in front of our change of luck, which is on terms now. A length and a half to Doug's Hope. Moving up, Celtic Spirit on the outside. Barrett's going to go up and try and put Harry into a pocket back on the rail. A length and a half to Vamp's Choice, followed on the inside by My Abbey. Then Mon Matic, a length, Comely Lady, followed by Mr Marmaduke. 
Marmaduke and last of all God's Girl. A thousand to go, turning off the back, out change of luck and deck in front of Aurora Peak. A length and a half Celtic Spirit, a head further back on the fence, Doug's Hope fourth. Two further back, Vamp's Choice being shaken up and then came My Abbey. Then Mon Maddock and a gap to Comley Lady and God's Girl and Mr Marmaduke. Off the back and the leader out change of luck got two in front. Celtic Spirit went to second. Aurora Peak is third. A length further back, Vamp's Choice. Uh, then White waiting for a run on Doug's Hope and three lengths further back, My Abbey and Mon Maddock. Nearing the turnout, change of luck, 500 to go, a length and a half in front of Celtic Spirit. He hasn't called on the favourite yet. Then Aurora Peak followed on the outside of them by Vamp's Choice. Doug's Hope now getting out as Celtic Spirit travelled to the front, 300 to go. Celtic Spirit put its head in front of her on the inside out, change of luck, who's fighting on and then Vamp's Choice and Doug's Hope is under the whip and the others are struggling. Celtic Spirit got to the front clearly at the 200 metre mark. Barrett went for home, it kicked about a neck in front of our change of luck, fighting back. Two lengths then, Mon Maddock coming home late. Celtic Spirit just the leader from on the inside, our change of luck, and Celtic Spirit will get home. One at a neck to our change of luck, a length and a half, Mon Maddock third. God's Girl has run fourth, and then Doug's Hope, followed by Aurora Peak, Vamp's Choice. Then further back in the field came at the head of the others, My Abbey, then Comley Lady, and last of all is Mr Marmaduke. Good battling win here. Two and placing two, number five, our change of luck, and third, number eight, Montmatic. And the dividends are one dollar twenty, sixty-five cents, one dollar forty, and a one dollar even. The Quinella paid five dollars ninety-five. The trifecta on race two, forty-eight dollars twenty, and the first running double at Sandown this afternoon paid twenty-two dollars and thirty cents. Well, that's a test opening up. So let's go to Ian Craig for the second In event. Space power straight to the lead from winner's intent. Ascot Lane, the third, then Jack's getting up on the inside. Wider is the Grey Laskin Galaxy. A length and a half then coming Kalani's pick inside. Prince Toranaga pushed along a little in the early stages. Four or five lengths then Persian Port. Way to Taru, followed by Warn and last Jabba Hut. Onto the course proper, a thousand to go. And the leader is Space Power. A half length on Laskin Galaxy. One and a half winner's intent. Then comes Jack's on the inside side from Ascot Lane, the widest run of Prince Toanaga, then Kalani's pick still about four lengths to Persian Port, then comes Warned, second last Jabba Hutt and three or four Wetu Taru, down towards the 600 metres not a lot of change in the order, Space Power a half length clear on Laskin Galaxy, very deep out Prince Toranaga, then Ascot Lane, Kalani's pick, winners in tent, Jack's hugging the rails and then comes Persian Port followed by Warned, a long margin Jabba Hutt and last is Wetu Taru around the corner they come, most of the Jocks heading out to the centre of the track. By the inside boy, and that is the rider on Jax. And Jax, the old bloke, just leads from Luskin Galaxy again, heading it. Prince Toanaga and Ascot Lane are right down the outskirts and winner's intent between them. Now as they come to the 200 metres, Ascot Lane the leader. Winner's intent goes after Ascot Lane. A race in two. Ascot Lane in front. Winner's intent a half length away. And then Kalani's pick. But Ascot Lane is holding winner's intent. Then Kalani's pick. And Ascot Lane wins nearly a length. Winner's intent second third. Third Kalani's pick followed by Warn, Prince Toanaga, Persian Port, Jax, Luskin Galaxy, Wetu, Taru, Jabba Hutt and Space Power near enough to last. Ian Craig sees them four, seven and six and the Victorian Galloper, Ascot Lane number four was the winner of the second event in Sydney, second placing to number seven winners in tent and third number six Kalani's pick, Johnny Marshall, the winning rider, four, seven and six on race number two in Sydney. Now the third... Th $6.70 and the trifecta was $63.85. Now the scene in Adelaide up at the gates there, they're moving into the stalls for the running of race two, the second red metal handicap perhaps. They're racing, rest jumped away very quickly near the inside ahead of Calibra, Stella Lockley zero away well done, to more and also showing some speed golden cafe, in behind them spires, out deep on the track going there is a gallant uh, effort now down the outside, Placid Angels towards the centre with Magic Lips and also Lesma Supreme Jack Remark and in that group too, as they link up to the course proper now, running to the 600 metre mark, uh, showing some speed, uh, speed there was Lady Luke they're right across the track again. Out wide on the track, the clear leader is Lesma. From in behind them, Supreme Jack, and also their Lady Loot, followed then by Remark. On the inside section, the leaders are Dance to More Rest, and on the inside of them, in turn, came Calabrasella. They're five in front of Lockley Zera, and further back in the field behind them, Deciduous and Co. But in two divisions, it's now drawing to the lead, Dance to More racing erratically. He produces the whip. Calabrasella comes at it. Clear of rest on its own down the outside. Lesma clear there, but Dance 
against the moral, though erratic, wins it by a half three quarters to Calabrasella rest and dance, and then out wider on the track was Lesma. Uh, following it up out there, Lady Lita, Supreme Jack ahead of it, and then Remark. They were really the only four that came down the outside section. Back towards the inside, behind those then, came uh, Deciduous, further back Lockley Zera, Magic Lips... Uh, Right, the numbers are 12, 11 and 16 as called by Ron in that long... Put well back to beat it. Racing. Broken a pretty good line to one of the first out Melbourne zone with acid test. Tristram Court has begun okay out wide and getting up on the inside, settling down up towards the lead here is Tolingo. Tolingo headed off by Melbourne zone and in the centre there acid test. A half a Lunda Sands gone up third. Fourth on the inside Tolingo and then Tristram Court a little wide around Super Pearl. Further back then Stock Take followed by Brigand Star and a couple of lengths further back in the field is Special Ming with Killerton last of all Pacific Heights. 8.50 out Melbourne zone led by nearly a length. Tristram Court, he couldn't get in, he goes up second. Acid Test into the box seat third, a length and a half for Lunda Sand. Then further back in the field, Stock Take, followed on the inside by Tolingo, then Super Pearl, Brigand Star. Well back in the field, then Special Ming nearing the turn with Pacific Heights. As they race to the corner now, the leader Melbourne's own, a half in front of Tristram Court. Griffiths is going to wait for a run on this uh, favourite Acid Test. There's nearly room to get up on the fence, now he has to hook to the outside. Now he goes back to the rail in the straight, Melbourne's own in front, but Acid Test got up on the inside. A length further back, Tristram from court fighting on pretty well now changes course Melbourne zone drifting out acid test the inside Alunda Sand coming home well it's Melbourne zone still in front with a hundred to go acid test stride by stride wearing it down they'll fight it out Melbourne zone still a neck in front of acid test towards the line and Melbourne zone will get the money Melbourne zone has won it about a neck on the post acid test a length away third Tristram court and a gap to Alunda Sand then further back stock take and a gap to Killet and Brigand Star well back special Ming from Pacific Heights and they're followed by Super Pearl Last of all in the race is Tolingo. Well, despite uh, racing uh, erratically... By the numbers were 12, 11 and 16. The winner danced to more, 23, 25 and 4, 45. Calabrasella paid 75. Rest paid 70. Quinella $41.85. Trifecta $569.25. The official result of the third in Melbourne with correct weight, number three, Melbourne Zone, $2.30 a win, 75 cents for the place. Number one, Acid Test paid 50. Two, Tristram Court paid 70. Quinella, $2.15. Trifecta, $13.45. Running double, a dividend of $9.60. Now, our next event, we will for this thing. So here's Ian Craig now. now off. Tats Road got the best of the start away. Well was Bayonet going to the lead. Paris Weekend nicely out and so too was going up quickly. Nan Utara, Nightcap not far back. Wide Sun Balloon and then Tour of Duty and Great Distance. A length to Carlos and Gallery Star. Followed by Nakimi Tomomi and on the inside next is Distant Fields and then Twig in Vain. Well back is Diploma and last of all Fiery Reason. A compact field at the thousand and Bayonet a length clear on Paris Weekend. Sun Balloon third then Nan Utara followed closely by Multiflex Gallery Star. Then Great Distance off the track as Tad's Road. Getting up on the inner next is Distant Field from Tour of Duty. Then Carlos Twig in vain, followed by Takimi Nozomi. Right out near High Street is Fiery Reason. Second last is Nightcap and Fallings to Diploma. Some of these horses not handling the conditions. 500 to go now and Bayonet Cassidy is spearing Bayonet out to the centre of the track. And as they turn the corner, Bayonet leads Paris Weekend. Sun Balloon the widest. Still Sticking to the inside rail is Tour of Duty, and then Distant Fields and Gallery Star, and Carlos is next from Nanutara. Over the rise they come. They're all over the shop here. Paris Weekend, Bayonet and Carlos on the inside. Tour of Duty is tending to bog down at the 150. Forget Paris Weekend. Bayonet still shows the way. Carlos on the inside kicking back. It's Carlos cutting down Bayonet, but Cassidy getting everything out of Bayonet. It holds Carlos, then Nanutara, and Bayonet puts up a good performance to beat Carlos. Third Nanutara followed by Tour of Duty Gallery Star, Distant Fields, Great Distance, Paris Weekend, Tats Road and then Takimi Nozomi Nightcap, further away Sun Balloon, Multiflex and a good margin to Diploma and Twig in vain and last fiery reason. Well in the third in Sydney they were all over the place like John Rothfield's lunch. Five, eleven and two, the winner number five Bayonet, second number eleven Carlos, 
and third number two Nanyatara, five, eleven and two, race number three in Sydney. And now they're ready, here's Ron Pat. Tidy start in the Prince Plea graduation. Lady Bond towards the centre away quickly with old photos. Near the inside, uh, getting away only ordinarily was Night Law and the Grand Duchess. They're beaten for speed. Just in behind that group, two on settling down now is Mr. Explosion working up to them. Out wide, Afari's image, Bacara showing speed with Burgundy Kingdom, Jervois, Max State of Man, Sleepy Seymour just behind them. And three away behind those came Regal Meadow. They've linked up onto the course proper and here the leader, old photos from Lady Bond, three in front of fluorescence and then came the Grand Duchess two and a half further back and niggled at Mystery Explosion not relishing it on its inside there is the Bolt of Night Law and further back Born Vane not travelling well with Bolt Imagination Burgundy Kingdom's gone to the lead out wide with Jervois Max Sleepy Seymour's getting at them now they're across the track where it's old photos Burgundy Kingdom but Sleepy Seymour out wide is coming home like a train Sleepy Seymour goes after old photos and Burgundy Kingdom old photos still in front and she wins old photos from Burgundy Kingdom Sleepy Seymour couldn't pick them up they're then Jervois Mack and out wide on the track behind them, State of Man, Fari's Image, Regal Meadow. Back towards the inside, Mr. Explosion didn't do a great deal. Uh, pulling up behind them with Night Law, Born Vane, and then the Grand Duchess, Fluorescence, Lady Bon, and a Bold Imagination and Bacara in that group. Numbers 9, 3 and 15 as called by Ron. Number nine, old photos, the winner. Light comes on, they're ready and they're racing and they came out a fair line, although the favourite quickly dropped out to the back of the field, Captain Police. Something stunning bounced to the front and led by a length to Lonely Dreamer, settling down a length and a half, Riquillo, a half Aberiti. First strategy on the inside of Indeed I Do, two to Jewel Planet, two to B and Jolly and the favourite last of all at the thousand metre mark and now he's gone up second last and that's Captain Police. Something stunning bowling along around that turn by a length and a half, Riquillo, a neck further back, Lonely Dreamer. Two to Aberiti, two further back. Back indeed I do, a length and a half first strategy and then dual planet. Two or three then to the favourite Captain Police, about ten lengths from the lead and four lengths to the stayer, last of all B and Jolly. 6.50 out, the leader something stunning, got away, two lengths in front. Lonely Dreamer on the inside of Briquillo, a length and a half, have a ready two to indeed I do. Then first strategy, dual planet, Captain Police being east to the outside but he's a fair way off them. 3.50 out on the straight, they race something stunning, about a half length in front of Lonely Dreamer and Briquillo, they're coming at him from both sides, they're clear of have Then Captain Police, he's giving them a giant start at the moment Captain Police, I don't think he can get up today it's uh, Briquillo grabbing the lead now from Lonely Dreamer, something stunning and Aberiti coming home well, but Briquillo in front and Briquillo is going to break through today Briquillo is going to get the money by a length Aberiti a length and a half, third in the race is Lonely Dreamer, something stunning, fourth Captain Police, never in it today, has run fifth from Jewel Planet, then for the back first strategy, followed by Indeed I Do a shocking run, and last of all being Jolly Simon Marshall, two race four with the Melbourne zone. And Briquillo creeping down on the weights today. Uh, and uh, he has scored from Aberiti, which... They've got drive. Time for our first live race on Sydney Cup Day, the All Age Stakes at Ramwick. One of my favourite gallopers, that dashing chestnut campaign king, goes around again as a hot favourite. And Johnny Tapp, if he wins again today, that'll make it uh, 21 from 42, 50% uh, winning record. That is quite useful, old son. Mike, it's uh, very unusual. Uh, not many horses in turf history can boast a winning ratio of 50%. Happened sometimes uh, with the champion Pacers. I think Hondo Grattan at one stage was running pretty close to that ratio, and so too was his famous contemporary Paleface Adios, but it's uh, quite rare amongst the thoroughbreds. He's been a super horse. His prize money tally is one million and twenty-two thousand. Today's race, uh, today's race is worth two hundred thousand dollars, Ken. So it looks like a bit more is going to jump into Kitty. And don't forget too, with Campaign King, he lost a race, a big race in Melbourne on protest. So the record could have looked even uh, better than it does. Let's look at the prices. He's the odds-on favourite, Campaign King. He looks the winner to me, but taking odds on on this track, well, I'll leave that to you. He's five to four on, 90 cents on the tab. Our Waverly Star at four and a half to one. Bonhamia Scratch, Tierra Rist at 15 to one. Rajamar at 20. Cosmic Kingdom at 60 to one, just on 60 to one. Regimental March and Drought were scratched. Six and a half to one sound arising. Getting out a little bit will make him seven to one now. Belciano is a scratching. 
10 to 1 Sound Horizon, and Bianco Flyer, 9 to 1, just a fraction less, between 8 and 9 to 1. She might be the danger, but I've got my cash on Campaign King. Here's Johnny. Starter coming over now to release the field, and they're about to break. Light flashing on top of the stalls, Sound Horizon reared momentarily, but they're off, and Sound Horizon is the first out from the inside gate. Rajamar began well, and so did Campaign King and Tierra Rest and Bianco Flyer, but nobody wants to lead, and Campaign King is being throttled in front at the end of 200 metres to lead narrowly over Bianco Flyer. Tierra Rest on the outside, and just behind those, Rajamar, followed by Star Sunrise, Cosmic Kingdom, Sound Horizon, and our Waverly Star is last, but only seven lengths off the lead in the under the first turn. Campaign King is pulling double in front, led by a length on Bianco Flyer and a half length away, Tierra Rist on the outside. A length and a half then to Star Sunrise on the outside of Rajamar. One and a half to Sound Horizon, joined by our Waverly Star. And Cosmic Kingdom had dropped out to be three lengths last as they go to the crossing at the 800 mark where Marshall allowed this leader to speed up a little Campaign King, led by three quarters of a length on Bianco Flyer. A length away, Tierra Rist, a length and a half to Rajamar on the inside of Star Sunrise and then our Waverly Star. Sound Horizon between horses and seven lengths away. Last is Cosmic Kingdom as they near the corner. Into the straight now. They're all out to the centre of the track and the big white blaze of Campaign King shows out in front on the turn over Bianco Flyer. Rajamar in third place and then Tierra Rest followed by Sound Horizon as they come over the rise. Campaign King is in front about a half length on Bianco Flyer. Two lengths away. Sound Horizon on the outside coming home hard now. On top of the rise Campaign King the leader but Sound Horizon's going to make a race of it. Sound Horizon coming at Campaign King. They've got it between them. Sound Horizon takes the lead. Campaign King can't find any more and Sound Horizon is drawing away and there's a surprise in the All-Age Stakes. Sound Horizon, runner-up in the Doncaster, wins the All-Age over Campaign King with Rajamar third. Then Bianco Flyer, our Waverley star, star Sunrise and Tierra Rist and tailed off in the race was Cosmic Kingdom. Sound Horizon has won the All-Age Stakes following his excellent second in last Saturday's Doncaster Handicap. Sound Horizon, number nine, written by Nigel Tiley on the TAB to pay $4.10.85 the place. Campaign King, 60. And uh, in third place, was it Rajamar we call third? Yes, he'll be third, Rajamar. Ken, he'll pay $1.85. Yes, John, no excuses for the favourite. Just that Sound Horizon handled the heavy track better. Now he goes to the lead. And, well, uh, it's rather incredulous to see them all get so wide at Randwick. But it's just that that part of the track's better. And Sound Horizon got even wider than Campaign King. And he went home better too. And he's won by about a length and a half with Rajamar, a fairly similar distance away in third placings. No excuses. The winner was too good on the wet track. He's a pretty good horse. He's won an Epsom and run second in a Doncaster and now he's a victor in an All-Age Stakes. OK, that was the story of the All-Age Stakes Race 4. Race 5 is the first leg of the Daly Double. It's the Sydney Cup. I think that the Bart Cummings Stable and John Marshall will get their revenge here with TAB number 6, the Bonnie Mare, round the world. Trainer Paul Sutherland, who has the winner Sound Horizon, is uh, thoroughly deserving of success in a Group 1 race because his horses have been running second in everything over the carnival. This horse ran second in the Doncaster. Brixton Town, trained by Sutherland, ran second in the Derby, so it's a welcome change of luck for him. Sound Horizon, winner of last year's Epsom, runner-up in last Saturday's Doncaster and thoroughly deserving of today's win. Brilliantly ridden by Nigel Tiley. And Sound Horizon is a brown gelding, a four-year-old by Sound Reason out of New Horizon and is about to be led back to scale by a group of very happy owners, Mr. E. Blancato, R. Murdaka, P. Spazzaro, B. McGeorge, Miss Pat Wheatley and also J. Deans are the owners of this very good galloper, Sound Horizon, coming back to scale after his win in the Group 1 All-Age Stakes. And uh, the totes officially $4.10 and, and 85 cents the place, 60 the second and $1.85 for third. And they're the placings in the All Age Stakes of 1988. And as Ken said, what an eerie sight it is to see the whole field charging down the outside fence. And that's the way it'll be. For